second, all participants will be on mute, but you can feel free to interact with us as well as the other participants through the chat feature as well as the Q&A. So feel free to introduce yourself in the chat um, and share any commentary that you have. Um, use the Q&A feature to address any specific questions that you'd like me to answer and we'll plan on covering those at the end of today's webinar. So my name is Abby Horswell. It's wonderful to meet everyone. I am a contractor who supports the Office for Victims of Crime or OVC Human Trafficking Capacity Building Center. I serve as a project specialist, which basically means I have the exciting opportunity to engage directly with the field through webinars and other events, as well as through our direct coaching services, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a few minutes. Um, one thing I like to share with people is that we tend to refer to ourselves as the center. As you might have noticed, we have a relatively long name. Though explanatory, it can definitely be a bit of a mouthful and it doesn't lend itself to a catchy acronym. So um, we tend to go by the center. Today we're going to be talking about the center's coaching services in general, and then we'll talk about a specific opportunity that's related to grants and funding. I know everyone is starting a, a busy work week this Monday afternoon, so we will try to um, wrap up in about 30 minutes, and then I'm happy to hang on the line to go through um, any additional questions, or if anyone wants to um, chat after the webinar, I will certainly be available to do so. So first off, the Human Trafficking Capacity Building Center is a coaching and development hub charged with strengthening the nation's capacity to serve victims of human trafficking. We support organizations and tribes in three ways. First, building their capacity to serve all victims of all forms of human trafficking. Second, navigating the broad range of resources that are available to support your work because we know that there's a lot out there and it can be overwhelming at times or hard to find the right information. And finally, strengthening service networks. So looking not only at individual organizations, but also the communities in which they operate. One thing to note is that there is no cost for the center services. So all of this um, comes free to your organization other than the time it takes to work with us. The center is committed to ensuring that its resources meet the evolving needs of service providers. So we offer three primary resources. First, our clearinghouse, which is a, cata a catalog or a repository of documents on a wide variety of programmatic and administrative topics that are intended to be adapted to help meet your organization's needs. Right now, the clearinghouse is internal, but we are looking forward to launching our website in September, so you'll have access to all of those things online. But in the meantime, you're certainly welcome to email us and request any specific documents we may have. Second, the center conducts proactive outreach to areas with little or no OVC human trafficking grant funding. The goal in doing that is really to reach those organizations that may need to build awareness of OVC's human trafficking resources and programs as well as build their capacity to serve victims of human trafficking. Right now, our current target states and territories are Arkansas, Delaware, Idaho, Indiana, Kansas, Mississippi, Montana, Oklahoma, Puerto Rico, Rhode Island, the US Virgin Islands, and Wyoming. So you probably are from one of those target states, which is fantastic. We're happy to connect with you and have you on today's call. So finally, our last service area to highlight is our direct coaching and development services, which we'll talk more about in a few minutes, but we assist organizations and tribes with identifying their goals and help build a multidisciplinary team to implement strategies and responses to help you meet those goals. So it's a really dynamic and collaborative process, and I'm looking forward to sharing more information about that in a couple of minutes. But really, um, the idea in offering these kind of three resource areas is that they work together um, and support one another and also help us meet our larger goal to build nationwide capacity. So in doing 
these three resources in tandem, we have the opportunity to reach organizations in those under-resourced areas and raise awareness of both the OBC human trafficking programs and resources, as well as to increase the quantity and quality of organizations that are aware of those resources and able to deliver comprehensive services to victims of human trafficking. Now, one thing to note is that it isn't to say that we only work in those target areas. It's just that we're focusing on those under-resourced areas um, really for that awareness raising component and making sure that we can get those resources to the areas that are in need and have those more limited resources and opportunities. The next three slides that we're going to jump into focus on the core pillars of the center's work, building capacity, navigating resources, and strengthening networks. And we're going to talk a little bit about how our resources that we just discussed help us achieve those broader goals. So capacity building is, is really one of those nebulous terms that's hard to define, but we use often. Um, and it can really mean different things to different people. So at the center, we view capacity building as an ongoing process where organizations work to enhance their abilities to identify and meet all sorts of challenges. Now, as victim service providers, you may think that a lot of these challenges are related to service delivery. But what we see at the center is that's often not the case. A lot of organizations request support around finances, partnerships, data collection, organization and management, and other administrative aspects of their service delivery. We will work across all of these areas, whether it be through our clearinghouse resources or through our direct coaching engagements to help you meet whatever capacity building goals you may have. We work with each organization to understand what those goals are and then develop a fully customized response to help you meet them. In terms of navigating resources, I mentioned this earlier, but we know that there's a lot out there. On one hand, you can definitely feel that sense of information overload. But on the other hand, if you're looking for something specific, it might be really hard to find that particular piece of information. So the center can coach organizations on how to navigate resources, like grants or other financial resources. Or if you don't have the time to engage with the center, um, this is another great opportunity to work with us through our clearinghouse as we can curate resources on a particular topic and share them with you over email. And this is what we refer to as an informational engagement. Finally, in terms of strengthening networks, the center recognizes the importance of increasing connectivity among service providers and offering a wide range of resources within a particular community. You'll hear this theme um, throughout our, our presentation and as we talk about the center's work, but we can provide coaching services around strengthening networks, such as developing a strategic partnership plan, or we can offer some strategic planning for new human trafficking coalitions. Or again, if you want to take the informational approach that we just talked about, um, we can send you things like a sample MOU or sub-award agreement that you can adapt and adopt to formalize some of your existing relationships. So as part of our nationwide capacity building process, the center works one-on-one -on -one with organizations to provide a coaching and development service that's fully customized to each organization's unique needs. So some people may refer to this as training and technical assistance, but at the center, we very intentionally use the word coaching because we want to describe more of a collaborative process. So we really view the organizations we work with as partners in this work. Um, and we really want to offer an iterative and creative process which you can compare to technical assistance and training where you might do sort of a one-time project or a one-day training, but not have the support you need to apply what you've learned or implement that project. So we're really trying to um, avoid those challenges and offer this collaborative and iterative process to help you build your skills. For each coaching engagement that we undertake, we have 90 days to work with the organization. Now, on one hand, 90 days can go by really quickly, and it feels like you're cramming a lot of work into a short period of time. But on the other hand, this sort of extended implementation period 
um, really enables us to look long term as well um, and make sure that you're receiving um, both kind of that immediate assistance that you're looking for, but also working to ensure that this piece is sustainable. So anything that you do, you'll be able to maintain in the future, um, apply the skills to other areas of work, and really continue working towards your longer term goals well beyond your engagement ends with the center. The other huge upside to having this 90 day engagement period is that it helps us make sure we're making reasonable demands on your time. We know that this is very much an investment and we recognize that you're balancing this investment with maintaining your daily operations and making sure you're serving your clients. So we want to help this fit into the important work that you're already doing. So hopefully many of you joined today's webinar because you're interested in learning about how to develop sustainable and strategic approaches to funding. Um, this slide lists some of the materials that we have available in our clearinghouse that are intended to help you do that. So we are, again, able to provide any of these documents via email for the time being, and we're very much looking forward to having them publicly accessible as we launch our website in the fall. The goal with all of these materials is to provide very concise and practical information um, with a goal for things that are read, readily applicable, um, where you can read the information and immediately think of ways to apply it to your organization. We're also able to talk you through some of these documents. If you have questions, um, it doesn't have to be um, a one-time email, but rather an ongoing dialogue um, because the center wants to help you build your capacity and really be that ongoing source of support. So the last slide here is really intended to give you some ideas about how you might be able to engage with the center, both in an informational capacity, um, as well as through our direct coaching engagements, if you'd like to invest that 90 day period to work with us. Um, please feel free to reach out to the email address listed here. Um, I'll also share my contact information at the end of the webinar. And again, if you're interested in any of the materials listed on the previous slide, but don't want to wait till our website launches, um, you can also request them through the email address here. So in the second part of today's webinar, we're gonna talk about an upcoming coaching opportunity with the center that we call our Sustainment Strategy Cohort. I know it's a bit of a fancy and technical name, but one of my team members has taken to calling it the funding support group, which I think is a, a fair way to describe the work that we're hoping to do. We wanted to offer this opportunity really around um, sustainment grants and other funding because this is the number one request that the center has seen um, in terms of both information um, as well as through our coaching engagements. Um, so we based this group opportunity really on what we've done with some of our one-on-one -on -one coaching engagements, but we thought that learning and sharing alongside of similarly positioned peer organizations would really be an added benefit to the great work that we're already doing. So as I kind of touched on, the goal of this small group coaching opportunity is to help participating organizations develop sustainable and strategic approaches to fund their anti-trafficking work. Each organization participating in the cohort will have the opportunity to enhance their knowledge of diverse funding sources with a particular focus on federal grants, align their program goals with potential opportunities, and most importantly, share and learn with peer organizations. In order to participate in the cohort, organizations must be already delivering services to victims of human trafficking, regardless of the scale. Even if you have a one-person program, you're certainly still eligible. Um, if you have a fully dedicated anti-trafficking organization, you're also eligible. The organizations that participate must be new to federal grants. Um, we're really going to be providing a lot of coaching and support around that. So if you already have several federal grants, it might be information that's already um, in your 
sort of repertoire of skills. We're also asking that organizations be able to dedicate at least two hours per week to commit to the information and meeting schedule. Um, we'll talk more about what that looks like in a few minutes, but we want to provide sort of that transparent and realistic expectation about how much work um, and time you'll have to dedicate to this process. Um, and then finally, as we talked about earlier, um, the center is really focused on areas with little or no OVC human trafficking grant funding. So we're only opening this cohort opportunity to the states and territories listed on the slide with the goal of really making sure we can get resources to those areas. Now, there are four sort of working components to this group. Um, the first is gonna be an initial assessment, which will be um, sort of one-on-one -on -one, um, with each organization, myself, and a grant strategy and human trafficking subject matter expert. During the assessment, we'll explore each organization's unique strengths and challenges and really get an understanding of what their financial goals are. The second component is a series of six online coaching sessions, which will be held bi-weekly, and we're gonna be going through information on grants, programming, and sustainment, um, and in an, another minute or two, we'll talk about exactly what each of those sessions will cover. Um, they're going to be very substantive and interactive um, and really content rich. Third, we're going to be giving independent assignments to each organization with the, the goal of helping all of the participants um, really apply what they've learned. And again, we'll talk about um, what those assignments look like in a couple of minutes. Um, and finally, the last component of this coaching series is around sustainment activities. So um, thinking about how to identify the next steps um, and how the center can support you even after this coaching group ends. Um, we'll have check-ins and continue to monitor your progress. Um, and all of that will go to what we spoke about earlier in terms of making sure that this assistance is sustainable and that you not only have the skills, but also the support um, to continue working towards your longer term financial goals. So as I just mentioned, I wanted to make sure to give you an idea of the topics that we're gonna cover in these coaching sessions. Um, so we bucketed them in sort of three general categories. Um, the first is what we kind of call Grants 101. So you'll be learning what grants exist and how to find them, again, with a real focus on OVC opportunities as well as other federal grant programs. Then we'll be really focused on aligning your program and programming to available funding and crafting reusable language that you can use both for program documents as well as for um, funding applications in the future. And finally, we'll be looking at long term, so thinking about that sustainment piece. We'll refine some of the materials that you drafted and think about what your strategy might look like as we're going into the next grant season. I also mentioned assignments, which um, some people might call homework, but the idea here is really not for this to be busy work. Um, after each coaching session, you'll have the opportunity to work independently um, and practice what you've learned on your own. The idea here is that you'll really build a repository of skills and resources that you can use in the future. I think the sample assignment on the slide here on the right is a great example of what that might look like. So one of the first assignments we'll likely take on is doing a search of all closed federal grant opportunities and making a list of possible options that align with your programming. It's a good exercise to sort of practice identifying grants and thinking about um, what opportunities you might be interested in pursuing, but it's also something that you can use in the future because many of these grants are offered year after year. So you can begin preparing sort of that list of grants that you might want to look at for next year. So in order to make sure that organizations can really benefit from the group coaching sessions that we're offering, we are asking everyone to review and commit to a set of expectations. So I'm just gonna take a couple of minutes to go over them with you. 
So first, we're asking organizations to be ready to provide information about your programming and funding. Things like brochures, flyers, one-pagers, annual reports, a sample grant application, and a budget delineated by funding source. Um, these information pieces must be um, readily available and you must have permission to share them. Um, this is kind of a critical piece of that initial assessment to understand each organization's um, unique goals regarding funding. Second, um, we want to make sure that everyone is available um, when we are meeting. Um, we don't want you to miss a coaching session because we're covering so much important content as we just highlighted. Um, so the sessions are on the dates listed here on the slide and they're gonna be from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesdays every other week, um, roughly between Labor Day and Thanksgiving. Um, as I mentioned, participation in, in all six of those sessions is really critical. Um, we want to make sure that organizations are willing to actively participate in an online environment. Um, the small group environment is going to be a really critical piece of your learning. So we want organizations to be prepared to ask questions and share insights and really um, maintain that level of participation throughout the coaching series. Um, and finally, we are just recapping the importance of completing those independent assignments between sessions and submitting them by the deadlines that we give. Um, we will be providing feedback on them and offering opportunities to kind of revise them and continue to build that collateral that you can use in the future. Um, but if we don't have enough time to provide that feedback, you'll be missing a really critical piece of the puzzle. So in terms of next steps, if this is something that sounds um, good to you, sounds like it will help meet some of your organizational um, sustainment and other financial goals, please complete the interest form. That is the critical first step. Um, there's a link on this slide. Um, you should have received a link when you registered for the webinar as well. Um, and my colleague Elizabeth will also put a link to the interest form in the chat. Um, if for some reason um, all else fails, feel free to email us and we'll make sure to send the link to you. Now the interest form is not intended to be an application process. Um, we want to make sure that organizations meet the eligibility criteria we just went over um, and are just comfortable with some of the expectations that we shared around meeting participation and information sharing. Um, this interest form is going to be due August 31st, and that is a hard deadline um, just because of the sort of aggressive timeline we're on to make sure we wrap up before the holidays. Um, after this deadline, everyone will be contacted, um, and for those selected, we will be moving forward quickly. Um, as you can see here, between September 1st and September 11th, we're going to be asking you to quickly turn over that programming and funding information we talked about, um, as well as get your initial assessment scheduled um, so you have that time to talk to us one-on-one -on -one before we jump into the sessions. The first session will be on September 16th, and that's when you'll have the opportunity to meet the other program participants um, and really kind of officially get started with some of this work. Now, for those not selected, um, we still want to work with you. Your organization just might not be the right fit for this group at this time, and that's okay. We are absolutely still happy to provide you with resources on funding and sustainment. Um, we can certainly reach out as we schedule future group coaching opportunities. And we can also talk about our one-on-one -on -one coaching and development services. Um, maybe funding isn't really the focal point um, or consistent with the goals that your organization has right now. Um, so please feel free to reach out to us about some of our other coaching services, and we can certainly put together a customized response plan for you. So I'm um, leaving our general center of contact information here on this slide. I've also listed my personal email address as well, so you can feel free to reach out to me directly if you prefer. Um, regardless of how you reach us, we are more than happy to answer any of your questions here. And I'm just gonna take a minute to pull up the Q&A and see if there are any questions um, that anyone has that I can answer in the next couple of minutes.
I see one question about whether we'll be able to send the PowerPoint by email this week. We'll be sending a recording of the email so you have the um, slides in there. And if there are any other questions, feel free to use, put them in the chat um, or use the Q&A feature. Um, otherwise, we will wrap up. I see another question about Idaho being a target, but not for the small group sessions. So sorry if we might have missed that in our slide, but Idaho is absolutely a target, um, both for our kind of broader proactive outreach strategy, as well as for our small group session. So if you are um, reaching out from Idaho, we would welcome the opportunity to work with you. I see another question requesting the link to the interest form and my colleague Elizabeth has um, added that in the chat. So if you need to access that, um, please feel free to do so from there. I see another question about um, if organizations receive VOCA funding, are they eligible for the OVC support group? The answer is yes, absolutely. Um, VOCA is a little bit of a different process. Although it's officially an OVC grant, it is allocated through the state administering agencies and we recognize that each state has a little bit of a different process for that, um, which may or may not align to the process that OVC and other federal agencies use for their grants. Um, so you are certainly eligible to participate um, if you receive VOCA funding. So it looks like we are right at the half an hour mark. So 30 minutes in and out as promised, um, but I'm happy to hang on the line. Um, if anyone else has other questions or would prefer to talk one-on-one, -on -one, I will um, certainly stay here for a few more minutes, but otherwise we are um, going to officially wrap up the webinar. Thank you so much everyone for joining us today and taking the opportunity to learn about our coaching services as well as the sustainment strategy cohort. We are very much looking forward to the potential opportunity to work with you. And if you are interested in the funding support group, we encourage you to submit your interest form as soon as possible. And we'll look forward to being in touch. Thank you everyone for your time today. Have a great afternoon.